Welcome to Pen and Gadget. This is a Monteverde Ritma that I just received. This is a new brand to me. Uh, I, I am fairly recently into fountain pens. So I, I saw, basically this was just an Amazon, oh, that looks cool, let me check it out kind of a thing. Comes in this uh, little package here. This is just hard plastic. Actually, I have I have a case like this that holds uh, calipers. It looks very similar. Anyway, uh, let's open up this box here. Inside, we see here a black uh, Ritma. I, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing this right. If I'm not pronouncing it right, well, you know, correct me. Um, but yeah, this uh, this pen. Let's take this out here. I'll show you what's in here too. Uh, this comes up, and then it comes with uh, your choice of, I, it looks like blue and black ink, and, uh, you know, a card showing, you know, the different color combinations. Obviously, I have the black here, and just a little bit about the, uh, you know, the, the overall design, I guess, and then uh, instructions on how to use it. This comes with the... Uh, the piston converter uh, as well, so that's a good thing. Well, one little thing to note, which is interesting, this cutout here doesn't fit the cards. It's The cards are too big, so I don't know what that's about, but uh, someone didn't uh, measure twice, cut once. Yeah, no, the cards don't fit where you think they would. They just have to sit there. So that's, I guess, one of those things. This is a, this is, by the way, this is a very affordable pen. I happen to pick this particular one up on Amazon for, uh, I think it was $24 shipped. So this is not a, this is not a high-end pen. I'm not expecting a whole bunch from this pen. Let's, let's, oh, this is going to be a nightmare. This is a very shiny, reflective uh, surface, so you're going to see all kinds of crazy fingerprints and everything, but we'll, we'll, we'll get up in here right now. We'll see the Monteverde USA. There's the, the usual dust from my renovations, sanding the floors. Monteverde USA, Ritma. Now, uh, they are a USA-based company. However, uh, these are not made in USA. I, I'm pretty sure these are made in China. And then, you know, they're maybe assembled in the USA. I know they're designed maybe in the USA. But, um, yeah, they're, they're an overseas um, operation, I'm sure. I don't think that this, for this price, can come out of a USA factory. Maybe I'm wrong, and, you know, correct me in the comments down below. Uh, and also subscribe so you can correct me every time I say something wrong. <laughs> But yeah, I, I believe that this is, again, you know, it's a fairly affordable pen. Uh, I, this metal, by the way, in photos, uh, some photos show it differently. If you put this in like an all white box, this metal ends up looking like a regular like chromed or stainless steel. But it's 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 like a smoked um uh, metal. Uh, some people call it gunmetal, but gunmetal is not, I don't think, really the right term. Um, maybe they call it gunmetal, but yeah, it, it has a it has a tint to it that's a darker uh, than a regular chromed object. Maybe, uh, actually, let's grab something to compare here. Let's see here. What do we have that has a chrome surface on it? Nope. <laughs> I don't have a lot of chrome surface pens, but, uh, well, just a, just a stainless steel object. Uh, you could see maybe, you know, that there is uh, a difference in tone there it, it, the stainless steel versus this, this like smoked material. So enough rambling on, let's uncap this thing. And that's its party trick. It's magnetic. Uh, and, and it, it's a fairly, you know, satisfying pull and push it, it it grabs on let's see if it does it upside down let's see let's see how much strength does it have eh, kind of i wouldn't yeah it, it kind of has uh, enough strength um I, I did i did a test off camera to do this really shake it i i can hear that it's like dislodging a little bit but then it's grabbing it again so i i had i had worries about this clip not being functional 
because of the weight of the pen and the magnet. But I think they used just the right amount of strength in that magnet so that this will not shake off. I mean, I'm doing that pretty violently and it's not going anywhere. So yeah, they, they did get the magnets right. However, this is an affordable pen. We're gonna critique some stuff here. The sizing of the section to the, um, let's get up in here. This is the innards. I, I believe uh, this ring right here that's inside, I believe that's the magnet. And then, you know, there's uh, some retainers in here. And then, you know, the, the clip mechanism uh, holder is, is back down in there. But the, the size of this versus the section, well, there's some play in it, unfortunately. So if I can do wiggles, and I don't know if you can hear that, but yeah, it, it, has, it has some wiggle and some play. There, if, if we get up really close, we can see yeah, I shouldn't be able to do that. And that's, it's one of those things where some manufacturers that make uh, affordable pens, sometimes they have to get their tolerances um, at, a, at a, a decent level so that they can mass produce uh, these items. And it becomes one of those things where they might have to sacrifice some fit and finish, um, in this case, fit, uh, and they went for finish instead. So it wouldn't have been hard for them to have made, I think, this this uh, to be tight so it doesn't wiggle. Like, I, I it shouldn't it shouldn't be able to do that for a more expensive pen. But for for twenty four dollars, uh, you know, nitpicking. But yeah, it does do that. It 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 feels. Oh, I'm gonna put it next to the microphone. It rattles. So, yeah, it, it, it's not it's not as sturdy as you'd want it to be. But again, at the price, um, yeah, let's move on. <laughs> so uh, the section is a um, similar metal to the cap and the end. Uh, the section is very, very, very smooth, which some people might not like. Um, I do like the size now. Now, for my hand size, uh, I have uh, uh, medium slash large hands. I say medium slash large because I'm fully aware that there are guys out there that have just giant mitts. So I, I probably have just like large hands, um, but but there are dudes who've got you know they they could span this whole thing. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's an indication of the size of my hand. Uh, so when you when you're taking a look at it, um, you can kind of compare it uh, from that. Um, I I like the length of the pen. I think it's a right size. Let's let's get a measurement. Let's go get in here. Uh, let's see now. Let's see the measurements. All right, to the tip we have one, two, three, four, five and an eighth. I would say five and an eighth inches. Um, this pen, I think, is the right size. However, I, and this is, this is something I, I grape on about about a lot of uh, newer pen designs. Um, why is the cap so tall? I like th this is a full size pen. You don't need to post this to write. There's plenty hanging off here, even for my my larger sized hands, right? So you don't have to have this to post. But look at look at this thing. Like th there's a lot of weight here. This this now it's unbalanced. This is not a pen I would want to write or draw for an extended uh, period of time with with the cap being this heavy and, and this far out, it, it's back heavy. It, it, it wants to go, wants to go back. So, you know, I would, as usual for, for my, <laughs> my channel, if you watch it, uh, yeah, I, I write what even the smallest depends on posted, but, um, yeah, especially this one. Why does the cap have to be so large? The cap is two inches, right? The section, uh, you know what? Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm barking up the wrong tree. Well, let's, let's see. I don't know. I, I feel like, I feel like this should be right to the edge. I, 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 I feel like, yeah, I, I feel like they could easily shave off almost half an inch and still have plenty of clearance for the nib. And I think design-wise, that would be a, a sleeker 
uh, uh, um, uh, design, but also then posting it, it wouldn't be so long. I, maybe this is just a me thing. Uh, I like pocket pens and maybe I just want every pen to be a pocket pen. I don't know. Um, but anywho, this, this is a, a lot of talk about design because again, it's an affordable pen. I, I don't want to really critique it on its, uh, um, uh, um, I guess faults, so to speak. But at the same time, I think you, you want to know what you're getting into. And these are my, you know, and I, this is coming from someone who, who is very much into the design, um, the writing experience I haven't had yet. We're going to have that live, uh, on, on camera in a bit. Uh, speaking of which, let's jump into this nib. Oh boy. So this is the Monte Verde extra fine nib. Uh, let's see if we can get on in here. This is going to be a little tricky. Uh, it says in here, let's clean this off. Monte Verde. USA, uh, and then it says it again uh, here. Well, upside down. <laughs> it says it here as well, Monte Verde. Um, I don't know why it's signed twice. That's an odd, um, you know, that's an odd choice. Uh, extra fine labeled on the nib, which is nice. Um, it has a coating, I believe. I don't know what this coating is actually made out of. Um, it's this, it, it gives a, a smoke, a dark smoked color. Now this is already smoked and then this is even more. Um, so, you know, it gives a nice little balance, uh, uh, going from the black, the, the smoke, and then, you know, almost black again. Um, it, it, it design wise, it's a minimalist, um, approach. And I like that. Um, I, I feel like it, it's, it, <laughs> It kind of reminds me of a magic wand, and if you haven't seen, like, this is very, like, typical magic wand, <laughs> um, uh, uh, pull a, a rabbit out of a hat kind of a look to it, except for the clip. I wish this clip was actually removable, because then it would be super minimalistic, then it would just be like this, which I think looks the best, um, and, uh, you know, I think the clip, although is functional, is very, very stiff. I mean, that's stiff. Um, I, I feel like I wish this little dome piece. Oh yeah. And it's got, uh, this like parabolic mirror type thing going on up here. You could probably start a fire with, uh, in the sun, you could probably shine a beam down. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a uh, uh, concave, um, little dome here. Let's get on in here. Yeah. Um, but let me, let me continue here. I'm, I'm waffling on as usual. Uh, so yeah, the, the nib, um, I don't like nibs that have something coated on them because ultimately that coating is either going to wear off, right? Or um, it's going to um, inhibit the ability of the pen to do something because, you know, obviously it's going to get into the, that slit, you know, and you can see, um, you can clearly see that they've done a good job at sizing um, the slit. So, you know, that's, that's not so bad. Um, regular plastic, uh, you know, I believe this is a Yovo six size nib. Um, and I believe that this is a standard like Yovo thing. Let's see, can we, can we screw it out? We're destroying the pen already. Oh, nope, I don't think we can. <laughs> I might've just broken something. Uh, let's see, uh, let, let's take it apart. Uh, unscrewing here. Uh, the first time I did this off camera, um, I was holding onto here and unscrewing and uh, I guess the pressure of my fingers held on too strong and um, the O-ring here came out and got stuck in the thread. So that was a little bit of a, of a pain in the butt, but uh, here we go. This is it um, apart. It comes with this uh, little piston converter. Um, it's not screwing, it's just pushing, um, I think international. Uh, you know what? I don't know if this is international Asian or I have, I, this is my first time taking a look at this thing. So, um, I'm not sure which, you know, size opening it is, but you know, it seems fine. It's got the little chrome finish, um, in here. Yeah. Just everything kind of standard. Um, let me see if I can remove this, this, it twists, which makes me believe that I can undo this. There it goes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I believe this is a Yovo six 
Um, and, uh, you know, by, by looking at it, it looks like uh, it was glued in place. Uh, and I broke that little seal right there. Um, but yeah, it, it's also screwed in place. There are threads in there. I see it. Um, and, you know, maybe when you get it, you want to put a little bead of uh, silicon grease in there to keep anything uh, from coming out. But there's that. Uh, let's let's ink this guy up. Uh, we haven't done this many times here. Let me get my ink rag out. Uh, everybody should have a good ink rag. Uh, get one of these. Um, you can get them from um, Walmart and a bunch of other things. They're like disposable microfiber. They come in like a roll and they're originally blue. Um, this is such a great ink blotting or ink right, uh, um, dabbing like cloth and it lasts forever you can see i use it a ton and it doesn't get cruddy it doesn't get crusty it just absorbs the the ink um so i use this whenever i'm inking something up uh let's use this i'm using is uh Hongdian black non-carbon uh black um it, this this prevents clogging the the non-carbon uh ink all right so we're gonna take uh take this guy out here let's dip him in and do some piston work i'm, I'm gonna Let's see, squish down, expelling, and then sucking up. Let's see. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's happening? We're going to... Pushing out again. Dipping back in. Maybe, maybe we're... we're... There it goes. Sometimes you just got to do it a couple of times. Okay, let's get the excess off here first. Sorry if this is taking so long, but um, uh, they got me with ink already. Uh, I, I I know people don't care, but I care. It, it for me it bothers me having the ink on the fingers. <laughs> all right, let's let's get all the excess off here. Wipe the feed. Wipe everything down. Use a clean spot. Okay, okay, now. Now she's all inked up and ready to go. Let's assemble the pen again. Now, this is slippery. This whole, there is no real gripping on this thing. So you, you have to have fairly dry hands uh, um, in order to grip this thing because this is completely polished. They're, they're, this is smooth as can be. And um, it's also a fingerprint uh, magnet uh, as well. Um, but yeah, you really kind of have a, have to have a good grip. If you, if you have any kind of silicon grease on your hands, forget it. It's not going to work, <laughs> but, um, all right, let's get rid of this dirty rag here and we'll do what I don't normally do. But since, you know, we just inked it up, let's do a, let's do a little writing test. Okay. Quick side note. I, I spent a little time writing with this pen and now I would say that the, the feel is much better. Uh, I think uh, it needed to have some, some ink flow through it. Um, it, this was not flushed as you saw. I, I inked this up right out of the package. Um, th there was no flushing. Um, so this was a, you know, first initial, uh, out of the package experience. And now I feel like the nib is better. I, I feel like it reacts negatively when you add pressure and if you just write lightly, it actually works better. Um, so yeah, the, it, it's an extra fine nib, although I would say this is a fine, not an extra fine. However, what I do like is you can get a real extra fine upside down. Look at that. So, and it's smooth. So uh, this, this is one of those pens that you can, you can draw and write upside down interchangeably. And I, I think you're not gonna have an issue. Oh yeah, that that is smooth. That is actually impressive. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and again, I'm drawing through the camera, so this is very, you know, just uh, doing little chicken chicken lines here and uh, um, whatnot. Uh, we can do my my little weird faces. <laughs> some some weird guy like this. But yeah, I, I mean. Anywho, uh, I feel like, and this is all upside down, you know, so um, that's that's pretty nice, uh, uh, and, and it keeps up too. I, I'm, I'm still going here upside down. There's no, there's no loss. Oh, well, maybe, uh, maybe I smoked too soon. Let me keep going. Or was it, that just a lift off? Uh, 
uh, no, I'm lifting. Okay, so there's there's an angle where it works well and not upside down, which is normal. So yeah, if, if I, I can repeat it. So yeah, I, I have to kind of go a little bit slower and, and meticulous with my lines. But yeah, I can continuously write upside down um, and then right side up, of course. You know, this the, the flow is, is very, very nice. Um, okay, anyway, just wanted to touch uh, uh, on that subject once again, because now I'm actually quite happy with the performance of, of this. Uh, and before, I, I wasn't critical of it at all, um, but, you know, the, the pencil feel is, is, is less, and it's more just like a, you know, a standard Yovo nib now. Um, and uh, not bad, I, you know, I actually, you know, as, it, if this was called a fine, I would believe it, but, you know, that that's extra fine. So, um, upside down, this is a, a two-for-one pen, which I actually like that. I don't mind that at all. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Now, back to uh, my blabbering. I know it's a long video. Anywho, uh, I, I feel like this, for the money, and this... <laughs> I say this a lot, but I think for, for the money, you're getting a, a, a really decent pen here. Um, uh, I think ultimately, um, design-wise, this is one of those pens that you're either gonna love it or hate it. Um, I I don't agree with the the caps um, uh, uh, mechanical connection. I, this would have been better implemented. Uh, uh, maybe uh, in a different way mechanically. Uh, I feel like there should have been an, a better uh, way of handling it so it didn't do this, that wiggle. Um, and uh, ultimately, uh, this is just some bent steel um, that is extremely, I mean, like, I'm, I'm trying hard to, to lift that up. That's pretty strong. Overall, I would say uh, uh, I'm probably, you know, I'm probably okay with it for, for the price. I, 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 I think it, it, it fits in my particular um, in enjoyment of a pen, which is um, that slightly modern, simple uh, aesthetic. Um, I'm not 100% sold on the dark nib. The cool thing is, I, I, I got to talk about this too, um, the nibs, right? If it's if it's a standard size Yovo, uh, especially if it's the the same size as a screw in for Yovo, don't worry about the nib, because if the nib is like good enough, that's great. But if you love the design, if this is like your number one, you're like, oh, I would write with this every single day. This would be my my masterpiece of of, of a writing instrument. However, the nib doesn't have the feel I want. Well go out and spend, you know, 20, maybe $30 on the nib that you really want from, you know, uh, 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 any place really that sells them um, and, and get like a, a solid uh, uh, nib. And for around, I think $50, you could pick up one from a few uh, retailers that will um, have it tuned and ground to something that you like if you want. Um, so yeah, you're obviously putting more money into it than the, than the pen is worth. And some of the colors are more money. I, I believe like the blue uh, comes in around like $35. Um, and again, these prices fluctuate during seasons and, and you know, ho holidays and, and just random, you know, uh, price drops happen. So I'm sure you could get all of them for, if you hunt enough for around the $30 or under, you know, price range. So if you're going to take a $30 pen and then put $50 into it, well then, you know, some might say, oh, you might have well spent, you know, 75, whatever on, on another pen. But if this is the design you want, don't worry about the nib so much. I, I would say if, if you are in love with this design and it's comfortable and you like the section, this section I think feels great uh, for me. Um, I, I like a thicker section and uh, the smoothness doesn't bother me at all. It has almost a stickiness to it because it's so polished. It, it, it kind of, it kind of is okay. Um, but you know, your mileage will vary depending on your skin, you know, your fingerprints and, and whatnot, uh, uh, how grippy it, it will or won't be. Um, but ultimately, uh, you know, if you fall in love with the design of a pen, um, and the nib is just not doing it for you. I I would say, um, let the, let the love of the pen because ultimately, um, if if this is what's deterring you, you know, just the writing style is deterring you. Um, but you, but you're like torn. Just just get another nib. 
and and you can save that nib to be your favorite nib and you can even swap that nib out for your different you know if 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 it's a whole nib unit that comes in and out like like these yovo um section uh, uh, nibs do um then just do do that with every pen you've got that that can accept it and you'll have always your favorite writing instrument and the design will just be that icing on the cake uh, so that's my outlook i know i've waffled on a lot this has been this has been longer than it probably should have been but it was you know it was a first time look at um this particular monteverde uh pen uh i i i don't even know if i'm pronouncing it right but it's a ritma uh I, you know as usual, it'll all be in the information and the title cards and all that stuff. But anywho, this has been my outlook on this pen. Um, yeah, it, it's I like it. I I think it's gonna I think it's gonna stay in my collection. This has been <laughs> Pen and Gadget saying sayonara.